So everything we've done so far was without connecting to any network. All we had is a Wi-Fi card and we had our Wi-Fi card in monitor mode and we were just launching a number of attacks. We were able to uh, gather information about all the access points around us. We were able to uh, gather information about the clients that are connected to these access points. We were able to sniff packets from these clients and access points. One of the main problems that we faced was that uh, if the network was using encryption, if it was using a key, then when we sniff the packets, the packets are not much used because uh, the packets are going to be encrypted and we need the key to decrypt those packets. So that's the motivation for this part of this course, to get the key for the target network so that we can decrypt, it, decrypt its packet. Further than that, we'll be able to connect to the target network after we get its key and then we'll be able to launch more powerful attacks and we'll be able to gather more specific information about the clients and about the access point. So this section, we're going to talk about getting the key for different types of encryption. The most famous encryptions, we have WEP, WPA and WPA2. The first encryption that we're going to talk about breaking it is going to be web encryption because it's the oldest one, it's the easiest one to break, but we still need to learn how to break it because you will see networks that still use web encryption. Web encryption uses an algorithm called RC4. Each packet is encrypted at the access point and then it's sent to the air. Once the client receives it, since the client has the key, it will be able to decrypt the packet and read the information inside it. So very simple. The, client, the IP encrypts the packet, send it, client receive it, the client has the key, so the client decrypts it. Same way when the client sends the packet, it encrypts it, encrypts it, and then send it in the air, the, the access point receive it, the access point has the key, so it will decrypt the packet. So, each packet that is sent into the air has a unique key stream. WIP ensures that the key stream is unique by using a 24-bit initialization vector. So the initialization vector is a random number. It's sent into each packet and it's sent into plain text. So this part, it's not encrypted. If you read the packet, you'll be able to read it in plain text. But the problem with the IV or the initialization vector, it's very short. 24 bits is not that long. So in a busy network, uh, there'll be a very large number of packets sent into the air. Uh, this means the number of possibilities of random IVs will be exhausted and we will have two packets that have the same initialization vector. So the initialization vector is a 24-bit random key. It's sent into the air in each packet and it's sent into plain text, uh, as a plain text. In a busy network, uh, we're going to have a very large number of packets. This means that the possibilities of unique IVs will be exhausted and the, we will, if we are sniffing these, all these packets, we will be able to collect two packets that have the same initialization vector. Once we have two packets that have the same initialization vector, Aircrack NG can uh, be used, uh, it will use statistical attacks to determine the key stream and after that it will be able to determine the web key. Okay, so from the above we know uh, the more IVs or initialization vectors that we collect, the more likely that we'll successfully crack the web key. So our main goal now when we try to crack uh, web is to collect as much IVs as we can because once we have a, lot, a large number of IVs and we're going to have two packets that use the same IV, then aircrack NG is more likely to uh, be able to determine the key stream and the web key for the target network. Uh, in the next video we'll do that, we'll see how that actually works and it should be easier to understand. Okay, so from the previous video we know that to crack a web key all we have to do is sniff packets from the target network and gather as much IVs as possible. Once we do that, aircrack NG will be able to use statistical attacks to determine the key stream and then the web key. It does this because when we have a large number of IVs, as I said, the IV is only a 24-bit number, so it's, it can be exhausted easily in a busy network. 
So once we have two packets that have the same IV, then we can uh, decrypt the key stream and the web key. Now, when we have more than two packets, obviously the uh, method is going to work better and our chances of breaking the key will be higher. So we're going to try to gather as much IVs as possible. Let's see the most basic case of cracking web key. First of all, well, I have my Wi-Fi card in monitor mode. So the first thing I'm going to try to do now is just see all the networks that are within my Wi-Fi range. And then I'm going to target one of those networks. So we're going to go Aerodome. NG, 1, 0. Just very basic. And the second network that came up is the network that we're going to do our attacks on. So it's a test AP. So we're just going to la launch Aerodome against this network now. So we're going to call, we're going to put the BSS ID like we did before. Just launching Aerodome against this AP. And then I'm going to put the channel. Number two. And then I'm going to add a write to store all the packets that we capture into a file. And let's call it basic test AP. And that's it. So, Aerodump ng, BSS ID, MAC address, channel, and the file that we're going to write stuff to, and our Wi-Fi card in monitor mode. Just launch an Aerodump on a target network. Now, as you can see, this target network that I have here is a quite a busy one. You can see the data and the frames is going, it's going up quickly. Well, quick enough, not very quickly, but it was very quick at the start. It is a busy network, so we have a client here. This is the section where we see the clients. So this client is actually doing, I have it actually playing video uh, on YouTube. So that's why it's going up quick and slows down, uh, quick and slows down. So we're just trying to mimic active client here. So all we have to do now is just launch aircrack, which is part of the aircrack suit against the file that we, that uh, Aerodump has created for us. We can launch aircrack against it, even if the file, even if we didn't stop Aerodump. And it's going to keep uh, reading the file and read the new package that Aerodump is capturing here. So we're just going to go aircrack and G. And we put the file name. So the file name was. So this file is still being created. It's still getting larger and larger because it's getting more packets. But well, we can run aircrack ng with that file running. And then with Aerodump running. And it's going to keep getting updated. And it will give us the password once it can crack it so now air crack is working and aerodump is collecting the packets for us as you can see air crack failed to determine the key within 5000 avs so it's gonna uh, sorry with 3000 avs it's gonna wait until the avs reach 5000 and it's gonna try again now the number of avs actually depends on the type of web so there's two types of web encryption there is 128 and there is a 46 bit the only difference is the length of the key. So the 46 bits will require less number of IVs than the uh, 128. Now the IVs, um, remember when we were talking about air crack, we said data is the number of useful packets. What I meant with that is the number of packets that have a unique IV or have a new IV. So the more packets we get with, uh, with different IVs, the more our chances of cracking the web key. Now we're basically just going to wait until aircrack can successfully crack the web key. Okay, perfect. I'm just going to control C error, error dump now. And as you can see here, aircrack successfully managed to get the key. So that's the web key for the target network. We were able to get it within 23,000 of data packets. That's because uh, the target AP uses a 64-bit key. Let's see how we can use this key to connect to the network. So I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to go to Genie. And we're just going to remove these dots. And use the key like this. So now we can connect to the target network. And here we go. Let's see test AP. And just going to paste it here. Connect. And as you can see, our connection has been established. So we successfully uh, recovered the key, uh, the web key for our target network. So I can just go to and confirm. 
ping Google and ping works so we are successfully connected to the target network. So in the previous video we saw how easy it is to crack a web key in a busy network. So we had a busy network, we had a client that was watching videos all the time and we saw how the data was increasing very quickly. Now uh, the question is or the problem that we're gonna face is an access point that doesn't have any clients connected to it or an access point that has a client connected to it but he's not using the internet as heavy as we saw in the previous video maybe just reading articles or um, just going on Facebook or whatever but not using as much data as we saw last time so let me just show you an example of that I'm just gonna run arrow dump against the target the target access point the test IP just to have a look on an ideal access point so we have test IP now the same access point that we used before the only difference is is that I, I've disconnected the device that was connected and you can see here in the second area uh, the clients area that there is no clients connected and you can see the data is zero and didn't even go to one so that's gonna be a problem that we're gonna face we won't be able to crack the key like this with zero data so um, what we can do is we can inject packets into the traffic uh, when we inject packets into the traffic we can force the AP to create new packets with new IV in them we capture that IV and we do that again that's the basic case that what we're gonna do we're gonna explain three methods of doing this we're gonna explain them in detail in the next videos so for now we're just having a quick look on how packet injection is gonna work but before we can inject packets into the air, uh, we have to authenticate our device with the target access point. The, see, the way that access points work, um, they have a list of all the devices that are connected to them. And they ignore any packet that comes from a device that is not connected to them. So if a device that doesn't have the key tries to send a packet to your router, your router will just ignore it. It won't even try to read it or see what's in there. So before we can inject packets to the router, we're going to have to authenticate ourselves with the router. We're going to use a method called fake authentication. And it's very simple. Uh, we're going to have to do it before any every time we try to inject. I'm going to explain it now uh, and then in the future we're just going to run the command straight away. So I have AeroDump already running now. Let's see how we can fake authenticate ourselves. Remember when I ex talked about arrow dump and we reached the auth, I said this is the type of authentication and I said I'll come back for it later. So you see now the auth is, there is nothing here. Once we do the fake authentication, uh, you're going to see an OPN showing up here, which means we've successfully de -auth uh, fake authenticated our device uh, with the target access point. So to do this, we're going to use AirPlay NG. We're going to use a fake auth attack. So we put the type of attack, and then we're going to put the type of uh, the number of packets that we want to send. So I'm just going to do zero. Some people use a large number when they have uh, when they're carrying attack that'll take like five or ten minutes. But for me, I like to just use zero and maybe do it later manually. So, uh, fake auth zero. Uh, we're gonna use the option A, the target MAC address. So I'm just gonna copy it from here, and I'll paste it. That's done. We're gonna use H to put our MAC address so that our MAC address gets authenticated with the target network. So to get our MAC address, uh, we're just going to uh, run the command if config then 0 and that's my MAC address. So I'm just going to copy it. LAN0 is the name of my Wi-Fi card. You can put MON0 because they're the same card so uh, they have the same MAC address. I'm going to paste it here and then I'll put the name of my Wi-Fi card MON0. So, AirPlay NG, the type of attack that we're trying to do, we're trying to do a fake authentication attack to authenticate our 
uh, MAC address so that we can uh, inject packets into the target network. We're gonna send zero, which means one do it once. Uh, and then A, we put the MAC address of the access point. And then H, we put the MAC address of the device that we want to do a fake authentication to, and that's my uh, own wireless card. And then MON0, name of the Wi Fi card. And then I'm gonna hit enter. And as you can see, it said an auth authentication request, and it was successful. And association is su successful now. So, and you can see here in the auth, it became an open network. And our client, this is my attacking device, showed up as if it's an it's a client connected to the network. We're actually not connected, but we have uh, we are authenticated with the network and we have associated with the network so we can inject packets into this access point now because it will receive any request that we send it now it's not gonna ignore our requests in the next videos uh, we're gonna see how we can inject packets into the air and how we're gonna make this data go up very very quickly the access point now accepts packets that we send to it because it's not going to ignore us because we've successfully associated ourselves with it using a fake authentication attack. Now we are ready to inject packets into the access point and uh, make the number of data increase very quickly so that we can decrypt the web key. So the first method of packet injection that we're going to talk about is ARP request replay. In this method, we're going to wait for an ARP packet we're going to capture this packet and we're going to inject it into the traffic. When we do that, the access point is going to be forced to create a new packet with a new IV. We're going to capture this new packet, inject it back again into the traffic to force the access point to create another packet with another IV. We're going to keep doing this until the number of data is high enough to crack the web key. Let's see how we do this in uh, Kali Linux. So, first thing I'm gonna do is just launch aerodump ng. I'm just gonna add a write to it. And let's call it this time ARP request reply test. And that's it running, and you can see that the target network has zero data so it has no clients associated with it and there is no traffic going through so it's not useful we can't crack its key and um, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a fake authentication now and as you can see the fake authentication was successful and the auth has changed to open so we can start injecting packets into this network and it will accept our packets when we inject them. Um, that's going to lead us to our third step, which is uh, the ARP request reply step, where we will be injecting packets uh, into the target network, forcing it to create new, uh, new packets with new IVs. So the command is going to be, just paste this now, very similar to the previous one. Just instead of fake auth, we're gonna say ARP replay. And I have an extra IR here, so ARP replay. Yep. Okay. And then instead of A, we're gonna have V for BSSID. So the first command here we did was just an association command so that we can associate with the network and we can start injecting packets without being ignored. Uh, sorry here. The third one we're going to do here is uh, the command that we're going to uh, wait for an ARP packet. We're going to capture it and then re-inject it in the air. Let me just associate myself again there and I'm going to launch this command. So. And here in the third section, a, a replay is just waiting for an ARP packet. Okay, as you can see, we've captured an ARP packet, and um, now it's injecting the ARP packet here. 
So it's just it captured an ARP packet, it's injecting it in the traffic. Uh, the AP is creating another packet with a new IV. We're receiving it, injecting it again, and we're just doing reply doing this over and over again. You can see the number of data has already reached 9,000. I'm just gonna launch Aircrack NG now. I think by the time I launch it, I'll be able to crack it. So I'm gonna air crack and G same command that we run in the basic case. Let's just see ls star dot cap and it'll show up for us. Yep, so that was it. So air crack and G file name. And sure enough, here we see the web key. And we were able to crack it um, very easily. Uh, the number of data has reached 39,000 by now, so it's running up very, very quickly. Another method of increasing the number of data rapidly in a network that has no clients associated with it, or if it has very low traffic, is Cork Chop Chop Attack. In this method, instead of directly injecting the ARP packet that we capture, we're going to try to determine the keystream for this packet. Once we do that, then we can create a new packet. So we're going to forge a new packet and inject this new packet into the traffic. Uh, this will force the access point to create a new packet with a new IV. We're going to capture it and inject it back into the traffic. We'll keep doing this until the number of data is high enough to crack the web key. So um, the start of the attack is going to be very similar to the one in the previous video. The first thing we're going to do is launch AeroDump against the target network. So I'm just going to call this chop chop test. And here we go. We have our target network here. The second attack that we're going to try to do is the fake authentication attack. Uh, again, we do this so that uh, the target doesn't ignore us and as you can see we're suc successfully associated with the target network now the third attack is going to be our um, correct chop chop attack in which we're going to try to capture a packet and determine its uh, key stream so uh, it's going to be very sim similar to the uh, fake authentication attack. I'm just going to paste that here. So instead of having a fake auth, it's just going to be chop chop. And then instead of A, we're going to have V for BSS ID. So A replay NG, chop chop, the MAC address of the target network, and then my own MAC address, and then the name of the Wi Fi card with monitor mode. Uh, we can get my own MAC address from if config line 0 and then my MAC address will show up like this. So I'll just do another association with the target network. And then I'm going to do my chop chop attack. Now um, Airplay NG is just waiting for a packet. Once it captured that packet it's going to ask me uh, do I want to decrypt it and determine its key stream or not? So we're just going to wait for it. I'm going to say yes, please. And now it's working uh, to try and determine the key stream for the target access point. Okay, uh, now I've resumed the video. Um, just want to show you that we've only reached 86%. Well, we can still actually use this keystream. It might work, it might not work, but we can still try. And, and sometimes I remember I had like 64% and 
and I still was able to forge um, a packet and inject it and successfully inject it into the traffic. So let's try this. Uh, now the keystream is saved into this file. So uh, now the next step is to forge uh, a fake packet. We're gonna do this using packet forge. We're gonna put minus zero so that uh, it creates an ARP packet for us. The MAC address of the target network and my own MAC address, same as this, A and H. So I'm just gonna copy and paste them. Here we go. Then we're gonna put destination IP and we're just gonna set it to 255 and then we're gonna set the source and it's gonna be 255 again that's just information that has to be there in the packet and then we're gonna use uh, the option Y to specify the name of the keystream file and it's this file as you can see file that was created in the previous step so we're gonna paste that and then the name of the uh, uh, the first packet so what do we want it to be called so I'm gonna call it chop chop forged packet and that should be in the W option sorry so that's the option so let's just go again over the command it's packet forge ng minus zero to make an ARP packet the MAC address of the target network, the MAC address of my uh, Wi-Fi card, then we put the destination IP, source IP, and then we put the file that we created in the previous step, and uh, the name of the first packet that's going to be created. Now the next step is uh, where we're gonna inject this first packet into the traffic and to cause the number of data to increase rapidly so I'm just gonna go to fake authenticate myself again just in here and then I'm just gonna clear this airplay ng to inject our fake packet into the target network so minus two for the reply attack and then or to choose the fake packet and then we put the name of our Wi-Fi card so minus two for replay or the name of our packet the first packet and mon zero so I'm just gonna associate myself again and I'm gonna hit enter here it's gonna ask me do I want to use this packet I'm gonna say yes and here we go you can see the number of data increasing very very quickly Again, I only had 86% of the keystream. I wasn't able to decrypt the whole keystream, but the attack is still successful. That's why I've had good luck with this attack with networks that are far away or with, net with stubborn networks that uh, the first method didn't work against. So all we have to do now is just wait for the data to reach around 20,000 and fire up aircrack ng again as we did in the previous two videos and it's gonna work it's gonna get us the key straight away i'm just gonna do it here i can do that here let's just clear that and the name of the file is chop chop i think so it's chop chop test zero one yeah And here we go, as you can see, we got the key with 23,000 IVs. Basically, just I'm gonna go again through the steps of this method. So, we capture the packet, we try to determine its key stream, we only determined 86%. We use that 86 to create a fake packet, and then we injected that fake packet into the air. The third injection method that we're going to talk about is the fragmentation attack. The fragmentation attack is very similar to the previous one, but in this attack we have to obtain uh, 1500 bytes of the PRGA, uh, the pseudo random generation algorithm. Because we need to order the full 1500 bytes, this attack 
is uh, we need to be closer to the target network to successfully run this attack but uh, it's much quicker than the correct chop chop attack uh, so again after we obtain the prga uh, we can use it to create to forge a new packet and then we're going to inject this new forged packet into the into the traffic to increase the number of IVs very quickly. So the concept is very simple. We're gonna capture a packet, uh, determine its uh, PRGA, create a forge a new packet, and then inject that packet into the air. So let's see how we can do this. Again, first thing is going to be running AeroDump against the target network. So I'm just gonna change the name here from chop chop to fragmentation. We're just gonna call it fragment. Hit enter and here we go aerodump is launched on our target network second step as always is a fake authentication so that the access point doesn't ignore us and it starts communicating with us so we do that and we see here we have successfully associated with the target network and uh, the authentication has changed to open so that's very good uh, third step is going to be our fragmentation uh, attack step it's very similar to the chop chop attack so uh, you can see here that's my chop chop code that I used the chop chop command sorry so it's exactly the same command just instead of chop chop I'm gonna say fragment so it's airplay ng fragment b the target address of my uh, target network and then h the MAC address of my own network uh, sorry of my own uh, Wi-Fi card so I'm just gonna associate myself again and do the fragmentation attack so it's waiting for a packet now once it captured that packet it's gonna try to determine its PRGA and here we go we got a packet so it's asking me do I want to use this I'm gonna say yes please now it's trying to determine the PRGA so that packet wasn't useful um, it's just waiting for another packet to use it's asking me do I want to use this I'm gonna say yes again Again, that packet wasn't useful, so we're just waiting for another useful packet. I'm gonna reassociate myself in the meanwhile, and I'm gonna say yes. Okay, now this time this packet was useful and the key stream is saved to this file. Okay, now we're just going to need to, um, again, the same as we did in Chop Chop, uh, we're going to use this key stream to uh, create a forced packet. So I'm just going to copy its name and I'm going to use the same command. I'm just going to clear this for you. And I'm gonna use the same command that we used with the chop chop attack. Uh, the only difference is I'm gonna remove uh, the Y and I'm gonna put the name of the new keystream that we captured. And the name of the packet that we're gonna create, I'm gonna call it fragment forest packet. So we're just gonna go over the command again. It's packet forge minus zero to create an ARP packet. Uh, a we put the target MAC address uh, H it is my own MAC address and then K and L are the destination and the source IP addresses um, Y is the name 
of the uh, keystream file so it's the file that we that has been created from the previous step and that's the name of it and then w is the file name that's going to be created that's going to contain the first packet and it's going to be called fragment first packet and it's telling us that it's been successfully written to this file so again uh, just like the chop chop attack we're going to inject this new packet into the air and this is going to be done using airplay ng with the minus two option the reply option uh, the reply option I'm just going to paste the name of my new first packet so we got airplay ng minus two for the replay or the name of my first packet and mon zero is my wi-fi card with monitor mode before i do this i'm gonna associate myself again and then i'm gonna hit enter here it's asking me do i want to use this packet i'm gonna say yes and here we go we can see the data is flying uh, we're injecting around 400 packets per second and um, once this number is large enough we're going to be able to crack the key i can just go here to air crack ng uh, so it's going to be air crack ng fragment test uh, dot cap and here we here we go we can see the key that's the web key and we have 30,000 IVs so if we go back here it's probably even more it's 35,000 and the numbers are increasing quickly so that was the three methods uh, to inject packets into the air there is more methods but that's uh, in my opinion the best three methods to increase the number of data into idle uh, networks uh, this way we're able to crack any web uh, encrypted network now in this video i'd like to cover a configuration that might be used on the target router that could make cracking it a little bit different now as we know web is very rare to see now anyway and this configuration is actually really really rare and most routers don't even support it it is a bit different to crack it though and usually people get confused when they see it and won't even know what to do. But it's actually kind of easier to crack this type of configuration than the normal web configuration. What I want to talk about is if the target router does not use open authentication. So we've seen in all the previous videos the first step was to do a fake authentication attack which changed the auth in Aerodump ng to open. In this case, the router can be configured to use a shared key authentication. So I have my router settings page here, and you can see that I changed the setting here to required. And what this basically does is it prevents anybody from even associating with the router if they don't know the key. So usually, routers use open authentication, which basically means anybody can associate with the router and then the router will check if you have the right password, if you have the right key, if you do, they let you connect, if you don't, they won't let you to connect. So they actually allow you to associate and they'll communicate with you. If a shared key is used, then the router will not even allow you to associate unless you encrypt a challenge for it and send it to it. You won't even be able to associate with the router if you don't have this shared key. Let me show you an example here. So I'm just going to do first of all aerodump ng mon zero to see all the networks around us. And you can see that I have this network which I configured for this class and it's called SKA test AP. So it's running on channel one and I'm going to copy its MAC address. And we're going to run aerodump ng against this network only. We're going to give the BSS ID the channel and we're gonna store the data to a file and we'll call the file SKA test and then I'm gonna put my wireless card in monitor mode which is mon0 so it's the same command that we've always been doing aerodump ng the BSI SSID of the target the channel and we're writing a file we're gonna hit enter 
and this is gonna run against our target only and now I'm just gonna come in and do a fake authentication just to show you what happens in SKA networks so we're gonna do a fake authentication exactly like we did it before so it's gonna be airplay ng fake auth and we're gonna put zero and then we're gonna do minus a put the MAC address of the router and then I'm gonna do minus H and put my own MAC address which is now I'm doing all this real quick because you should know all of this by now because we covered it in previous lectures and my own MAC address is 00C0CA828298 then we're gonna put our wireless card in monitor mode which is mon0 so again, same command that we always use for the fake authentication. We're gonna do airplay ng fake auth zero target MAC address my MAC address. I'm gonna hit enter. So I'm gonna control C this. So you can see that we have SKA here under the auth instead of open. And that means we can't really do all the attacks that we did previously, the three methods, the three injection methods that we spoke about previously. The way to fake authenticate yourself with SKA networks is you'll have to deauthenticate one of the connected clients in here. So you actually need, you have to have a client connected to the network. You're gonna have to deauthenticate it. Once you do that, AeroDump ng will capture an SKA. You can see that I have a broken SKA here, but if you do that properly, you will get a normal SKA. And then you'll use that file with the minus Y option to fake authenticate yourself to associate with the network and then you can do all the attacks that we spoke about in the previous lectures the three methods the thing is that's a bit too complicated and there is two better methods to do that because as i said if you want to associate and the target network uses ska the network has to have a connected client has to have at least one connected client so based on that fact there's actually better ways to crack that network and I'm going to show you the first method right now, and that is using an ARP replay attack. So let me close this first. And I'm going to clear this. And I'm actually going to stop this and clear it and run the attack again, because I want to show you that you actually don't even need to run a fake authentication for this. So we're just going to name this something else. We're going to call it SKA test two and we're gonna launch Aerodump ng and as you can see right here I don't have authentication or anything on this network right now and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an ARP replay attack so we spoke about that and we actually did it in a previous lecture the only difference is when we did it we did a fake authentication and we associated with the network and then we used the replay attack based on our MAC address so we replayed packets from our computer and injected them in the router. In this lecture, because we actually have a client, when we did it in previous lectures, there was no clients connected, so we had to associate our client showed up in here, and then we used our client MAC address to replay one of the ARP packets, and we managed to increase the number of data rapidly that way. What we're gonna do today is, because we already have a connected client, we're going to use this connected client in our replay attack. And this method will work against both normal networks and against the network, the web networks that use SKA. So this attack is going to be exactly the same as the ARP replay attack that we did. The only difference is we're going to use the MAC address of a connected client instead of my own MAC address. So the command is going to be airplay ng ARP replay. Then we're going to do minus B and we're gonna give it the MAC address of the target network. Then we're gonna do minus H. And instead of giving it my own MAC address like we did in previous videos, I'm gonna use the MAC address of one of the connected clients, which is this one. Then I'm gonna put my wireless card in monitor mode, which is mon0, and we're ready to go. So again, we're using AirPlay ng. We're doing an ARP replay attack exactly like we did before. We're specifying the target network after the minus B. And then we're specifying the MAC address of a connected client this time, instead of specifying my own MAC address. 
So I'm going to hit enter. And what this is going to do is it's going to wait for an appropriate ARP packet. And once it captures one of them, it's going to inject it in the traffic. But when, when it's going to do that, it's actually relying on this connected client. And it's injecting it as if this packet is coming from this connected client. And as you can see, the number of data is increasing very, very fast right now. And I can just run aircrack ng on the side and I should be able to crack the password. So again, I'm going to run this like we did before. And we named the file ska test and we named it to. And we have to append the minus zero one because arrow dump ng does that automatically. And that's going to be a dot cap. We're going to hit enter. Now I'm going to stop this. And as you can see, we managed to get the key. Now we can use this. We just remove these dots from it and connect to the target network and we'll be able to connect to it. So again, this method works on both normal web networks and the ones that use shared key authentication or SKA. The only thing that it requires is an existing connected client to the network. So it's not a clientless cracking method.